Hey, good morning, it's Dr. James. I do hope and pray this message finds you and your loved ones peaceful, thriving, and well. And before I hit the go button this morning, I was very, very intentional. I said, God, universe, oh please, light, make sure that I do everything I can this morning to convey a message in such a way that it lands right in your heart, right in your heart. There's a strong, strong indication, according to research, that every single one of us who hears this message today either personally is struggling with some mental health challenges or we know someone who is. It's a strong likelihood. It's affecting one out of six of us across the entire world. So um, there's a pretty good chance you know someone. And if it's you, I feel what you're feeling. I'm, ch I'm feeling challenged these days as well, deeply challenged. And I'm working on it. I'm doing all the things I know work uh, through medicine. I, I do my meditation. I, I, I don't eat sugar, so I'm eating, I'm more than ever not eating sugar. <laughs> Just leave it that way. Uh, I'm making sure I get outside and spend time in nature. I'm doing my very best to be more present moment by moment, doing all the inner work. But this is a little bit of an outer practice that I find, oh my goodness, this is awesome because I have pretty much 99.7 of this last year been working from home. I used to spend a lot of time driving down the mountains and going into Denver to do certain things uh, as part of my work. But now everything is saying we're doing it all through, uh, through technology. And I'm missing some of these things. I'm missing people, I'm missing interaction, and I'm also missing the commute because it's interesting. Uh, a recent study came out and said, you know what? There's a lot about our commute that gives us certain neurochemical and physiological experiences that help us to deal with anxiety. It gives us something to kind of look forward to, to be a part of, it's a ritual. And it's interesting, right? Because a lot of people, I mean, gosh, just two years ago, we were going, oh, the commute, man, it's causing so much stress and people spending more time in cars are linked to having a shorter life expectancy and on and on and on. So we're like, okay, do I commute or don't commute? Now I'm not commuting and my, my mental health is being challenged by it. So here, According to this very cool study, it says that if we are not commuting and if we are experiencing more challenges with our mental health and uh, just emotional resilience, we can do the fake commute. That's what they called it in the research, the fake commute. If you're normally commuting a half an hour, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, whatever it is, take that exact amount of time and go for a walk, go for a bike ride, go for a run. Go for whatever you need to go for during that same time. And the studies show that our mind, our body, our emotions, our spirit connects to something with meaning and literally helps us with hormonal harmony, helps us with getting a little squirt of dopamine for motivation and a sense of purpose. It helps us kind of raise our serotonin levels so we feel more centered and we feel more calm and even more happy. And at the same time, we give our cortisol a job to do. Because what the research is telling us, when we get up and we're not normally commuting, um, we're just kind of just being, we get right into work, our cortisol levels are rising up. And when that happens, our mental health, our emotional resilience becomes challenged. And we need to find a place for cortisol to go, that stress hormone. Guess where it loves to go? It loves to go for a walk. It loves to go for a ride. It loves to go for something that gets us back into some kind of routine that doesn't put us right into work and make us work the extra hour or two that we're not commuting. We're now just sitting at home working. It's having a de devastating effect on us. And extra credit here too. Uh, this is interesting. If we actually are working from home and if we have a choice to be fully dressed and like we are going off to work someplace or because we're not being seen by anyone or by anyone that outside of our family or loved ones, if we don't get dressed, that also affects our mental health. So do all of us a favor, and I mean all of us, commit to getting dressed alongside of taking your fake commute and you will also raise all of those energetics, all those physiological and neurochemical energetics that will further enhance our mental health. When I say all of us a favor, because we, we are all going through this right now. And the more that we are all being proactive and we are all kind of banding together, coming together, being in that space of saying, hey, listen, I know what you're feeling, I'm feeling it too. And here's what I'm doing. 
I'm, I'm taking a 20 minute walk instead of my 20 minute drive. Uh, I'm, I'm getting dressed and uh, it's just for me or it's just for my spouse, it's for my dog. It doesn't matter. But what our brain and our body loves is to connect with rituals that gives us a sense of purpose, helps us to ground again in something that's familiar. We don't want this pandemic to become overly familiar in such a way that we start getting darker. We start kind of losing our way even more. We need, in spite of what's happening out there, to kind of keep in here strong, strong as possible. So make your commute out in the woods, down the street, into the cul-de-sac, wherever you can go, and come home and get dressed. Give yourself the opportunity to raise the ritual of self-care and self-love by going through the motions and raising your positive emotion. We are all in this together and we have an opportunity to rise and shine in spite of what's happening out there, loving what's happening in here and raising the vibration, raising the energy and turning on the light for possibility each and every day. We're together. I see you and I love you. All blessings. Bye for now.